Hey guys, it's Alan from DW and welcome back to DW Soundworks. In this video, I'm going to go over the advanced settings and how you can audition articulations, edit their volumes and pitch, edit the samples lengths and fades, and maybe a little bit more. Let's jump right in. Okay, let's take a look at our advanced mapping options in Soundworks and more importantly, our controls we have for uh, length and fade on our samples where we can turn our samples into pretty much anything we want. So I'm gonna be using a snare drum for this example. Uh, you can follow along, you can load the 50th anniversary studio kit or one of your own presets or another preset, doesn't matter. Uh, the advanced mapping options is found in the drums tab, obviously, uh, under articulations, drop down menu, very first thing here. And before we get into all of this, let's take a look up here at the top left corner where we can load and save MIDI maps or even clear and start from scratch with another instrument. Uh, so saving MIDI maps, if you make any edits that have to do with like a rolling kit or something else, you can save your own personal MIDI map. You can load MIDI maps. We do have a handful here that shipped with Soundworks. Uh, so you can load uh, as needed from ours or even your own on the computer anywhere. And that's pretty much it for that little menu there. Uh, you can clear and start from scratch. I think I said that. So as far as mapping and MIDI and all this goes over here, we'll cover that in a more advanced video. But this video, we're going to concentrate more on how to control your samples, especially the length and fades here that we have not gotten into yet. So let's get into that now with the snare drum expanded. You can see all the articulations here, just like you see in the articulation panel. We have preview or audition buttons here and uh, volume controls there to balance out everything. You have those over here as well, audition and volume. Those are usually one of the last things I do when I'm doing a preset, I come back through after all the mixing is done, compression is in there and parallel compression is in there. And then I balance all the different articulations to make sure like a rim sounds like it's the right uh, level compared to the head or edge or rim shot for that matter. You have your volumes uh, here as well. So you can do what I just mentioned in either one of those little windows right there. We have our pitch knob here, uh, which is the same as our tuning knob over there. And uh, you'll notice this pop-up that keeps coming up. Right click and drag to modify all child articulations. That's extremely important because what you wanna do, like say this snare drum here, I wanna lower the snare drum. And right now, all the articulations match. But if I just regularly left click and drag that snare head down, and say I want a, a deep snare. The problem is everything else is still at a higher pitch. So I'm going to control click that to reset it. If you right click and drag, you will move all your tunings at the same time. Now it's just for this one instrument, not all instruments, but it's just for this one instrument and all its articulations. So in this case, I wanted to go for like a country, deep, more controlled sound like a mainstream country rock song and so i'll drag this down to like say near two and a half or something like that it's 2.29 and you'll see all of them moved with it if anything ever gets off a little bit like for some reason you'll, you'll see as you start to use this if something gets off to reset it just simply drag back and forth a couple times and then set it back to where it was so let's say like two and a third there and now you'll hear all those samples are tuned down together Let's say you're a drummer that likes cross sticks a little bit higher pitched. You now can come in here with your left click and just do that one up where you want it. So now my cross sticks match, but so do my head at lower tunings. So then uh, I've got my pitches all set. Next thing I wanna control is my length. So as we lowered that pitch, you can hear and feel that that drum got thicker and fuller and longer. So I may want to rein that back a little bit. And the way we do that is we just right click our length knob, pull that back. Let's go to like 20, half of it. So now you hear that control like I put a gel dot on the, on the snare head. And you hear that across everything. Now here's where I wanna stop and give you uh, a little bit of a different example. I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna take this tune tuning up high like we're doing a reggae snare. So it doesn't sound natural, um, but I'm gonna take the length down and, and make it even tighter. Let's go with like 15. Now that's probably where we're gonna end up, but for an exaggeration, let's take it down to like minus six-ish or something. And you're gonna to start to hear snare gets cut off. In fact, 
our default uh, fade value here. If I drag those back down to zero, you will hear the, the sample get cut off completely. And what's happening here is you have the sample that we gave you, the full, the full uh, sustain. And you've taken the length and you've shortened to like this. So what's happening is that sustain is hitting this wall and then stopping. But we can fix that. We have a fade here that we can control. So that's the blue knob here. You right click that and drag it all the way to the right to 100%. And what you have done is that you now have taken a fade and pointed it right at your transient. So now you're going to hear a tight transient and just an even dead fade to the length you chose. This is where you can start to fine tune and say, mm, maybe that's a little too short. So let me bring my length back up to like say 10. Starting to sound more natural. Let's bring it up to like 13 or 14 or 15. Sounds very natural, but you may think, well, but that transient sounds kind of compressed now because it's pop at the transient and then an immediate fade. Well, that's when you bring the fade back a little bit. Start at like doing like 20% at a time. And now you can hear you've taken the fade pointing at the transient. You've dropped it back a little bit. And so you're getting more of your initial hit and the body of the snare. And you can exaggerate that back as far as you wish. And basically, like I go around 50%. And basically what's happening is now the length is pointing at like 50%. So your fade is going to be fast and you're going to get a lot of the attack. So it comes down to fine tuning what you want for your, your intended result. So in like a reggae uh, type of thing, I would probably go to like 80, 90, something like that. And of course, my mixing is for something else, but you get the point uh, that you can control now, make the snare something totally different than it was when we first started. So I'm going to reset all these by simply dragging back and forth a few times, just like that. All right, and I'm going to take this snare drum to minus two, about two and a half is what we said. And now I'm going to fix my length, bring it up to 100%. It's way too long, so I'm going to bring that back to... What did we decide before? About 18 or 20%. It's pretty close. And now I'm going to control that fade. And get a little bit body, get a little bit more body before it starts to cut off and make it sound natural. Let's try 75. That's pretty good there. Might even want to go up a little bit higher. That's nice. I sound like I have a nice couple of uh, gel dots on the drum or a wallet. <laughs> And I'm getting the sound that I intended. And again, if you need to pull that cross stick back up, you just come over here with the left click and pull it up where you need it and match your, um, your snare off cross stick as well. And that's how you do it. It's really super simple and it's extremely effective uh, for turning your drums into anything you want. In the end, after doing a preset, you will probably find that you come back and tweak like uh, things like toms to make all the sustains the same. So usually when I start a preset, I will cut some of the stuff, some of the sustain down, and then I'll go into the mixer and mix, which we will cover in another video. And then I will come back at the end and do all this to where I get the drum to sound exactly the way I want it to sound. Uh, and then finally, I will balance out on the right side there my articulation volume values uh, after my mixing, compression, and all that to ensure that they match and sound natural when I sit down at the kit. Which right now, because we've changed some lengths and fades, I can hear that that rim shot is much louder. It's not too bad. But anyway, I would go back in here and I would balance a little bit more. Uh, to ensure that before I'm done with this preset that everything feels natural on the kit, sounds natural in my recordings and so forth and so on. Hey, thanks for sticking around. I'm glad you made it this far and I hope our video helped you. I hope I was able to shine some light on a lot of the features and sound works that will help you get started making your own presets. Please be sure if you haven't already to go ahead and subscribe below so that you can get notified of upcoming tutorials. I'm going to have probably several more come out that will help you uh, dig even deeper into Soundworks. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.